the AFC North has long been one of the stronger divisions in the NFL with three out of the four teams usually entering the season as legitimate Super Bowl contenders. The Cincinnati Bengals have won the division in two out of the last three seasons, but some key hits to their offense have their reign atop the AFC North in a precarious position. A new edition of the Pylons coming at you right now. And it's almost coming into sight, and it running out of time. Your decision on a dime has you gliding through the sky, and it's praying that you fly on. Didn't go as planned, but you're knowing where to land, so you stick it out your hand while you hit the cheering. Fans, commentators in the stands going in a freaking trance when you're. Change to the pylon! <laughs> In 2016, the AFC North will belong to the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland made all the right moves this offseason and it's bound to pay dividends. As I've stated before, the pairing of RG3 and Hugh Jackson was absolutely genius. And from what I saw last night, RG3's confidence seems to be back. He had that aha moment after his second touchdown to Gary Barnage and I think he's going to take that moment and run with it. Here's what people fail to realize, Cleveland's offense has the chance to be explosive. Gary Barnage came out of nowhere last year with the Pro Bowl caliber season, Terrell Pryor has been lighting it up this training camp at wide receiver, and Corey Coleman has reportedly looked good as well. And then they get Josh Gordon back in week 5. RG3 is going to have an array of weapons at his disposal with Hugh Jackson in his head directing him on not only how to use those pass catching talents, but RG3's own athletic talents as well. But Cleveland ain't going anywhere giving up 27 points per game guys, joke's over. Cleveland, stick to basketball for your source of happiness, and as much as I hate to say it, it looks like Baltimore's gonna hold out for another year of happiness as well. Now, as a Ravens fan, it was easy for me to pull the injury card because the number of players we had on IR was absolutely ridiculous. But I'll be the first to admit that is a weak excuse. Yes, we lost Suggs week one and that was a blow, but that game was lost off of, a, off of a drop pass by Steve Smith and a bad interception by Joe Flacco at the end of the game. Steve Smith didn't go down until our week eight victory against the Chargers. What was our record prior to that game? One and six. We didn't lose Flacco until week 11 against the Rams. What was our record prior to that game? Two and seven. We swept the Steelers last year, which is always sweet, but we've lost to Cincinnati five times in a row. So until we get over that hump, I can't say the Baltimore Ravens are gonna be champions of the AFC North. The Bengals, they've lost some key pieces on offense, but AJ Green still remains a threat, and that defense has been inside of the head of Joe Flacco since he first entered the league in 2008. And unfortunately for the Bengals, even though they won the AFC North last year, the Pittsburgh Steelers have been in their head all offseason. See, here's the thing that separates the Steelers from the Bengals for me. I feel like the Steelers have better depth than the Bengals do offensively. Pittsburgh has already proven they can operate without the assistance of Le'Veon Bell and Martavius Bryant. I don't know if Andy Dalton is going to be able to operate with the loss of Hugh Jackson along with the losses of Mohamed Sanu and Marvin Jones as well. Bengals have Andy Dalton, Steelers have Ben Roethlisberger, Bengals have AJ Green, Steelers have Antonio Brown, Bengals have Jeremy Hill and Giovanni Bernard, Steelers have Le'Veon Bell and D'Angelo Williams. Steelers have them checked everywhere on offense while the defense of the Steelers is an up and coming unit that is much younger and faster than the Bengals defense. Ben Roethlisberger is the key to this entire shit. None of the other quarterbacks in this division have proven that they can be the guys to carry their teams week after week. The other teams in this division need a certain level of balance in order to be successful. However, with Big Ben at the helm, the scales tip in favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers.